same. Okay, last year the representation of the European Commission took part for the first time in the Luxembourg Pride, and I think that was for both of, of uh, as well the organizers as for us, it was an important milestone. For this year, we hope to be in the streets with you again, together with thousands of people, but due to the circumstances, we found this webinar a really good alternative in order to support equality and uh, non-discrimination. I am absolutely delighted to welcome today Commissioner Helena Dalli, who is in charge of equality within the European Commission. Commissioner Dalli insisted to personally participate in this webinar to underline the importance of EU action in this matter. It is great to have you with us today, Commissioner. The same is true for Minister Corinne Kerr, among others, Minister for Integration. The first time we spoke about this webinar, a Council of Government was scheduled at the same moment. Mrs. Kerr nevertheless immediately said, I should not worry, she would leave the Council of Government to be with us to underline her attachment to the cause. Mark Angel is a good friend for long years already. I, it took him less than a second to confirm his participation. I always remember that Mark was one of the first in Luxembourg to be openly gay at the time. This was all but uh, socially accepted everywhere. Today he is co-chair of the LGBTI intergroup at the European Parliament. And I also remember the time when uh, Rosa Luxemburg got vocal to defend the rights of uh, gays in the 90s. It's quite a long ago, but it's not that long ago if you think about it. And Rosa Luxemburg has done an enormous parkour since that time, where many considered them only being kind of uh, a disturbing element in an established society. I'm very glad that their president and the organizer of the Luxembourg Pride, Tom Hacker, is with us today. When I think of the rights of LGBTI, I believe that nobody has done more than the European Union. It started certainly earlier, but the real coup d'envoi was probably given with the adoption of the European Charter of Fundamental Rights 20 years ago. The EU set the norm and everybody was entitled to claim this norm in the European Union. Today we do this webinar because we are in the context of the Luxembourg Pride Week, but also because we found it important to highlight the scope, the accomplishments and the challenges for European action towards the LGBTI equality. And in spite of all, that, of all what has been accomplished, prejudice is still strong and in some areas there is a worrying backside in the rights of sexual and gender minorities. All this is what we want to discuss today. I welcome our moderator, Helen Vallon, which is a film producer and among others, the film curator for the Queer Feminist Association Queer Roots. I want to finish by reminding uh, a point of the Charter of the Fundamental Rights of the European Union, which says any discrimination based on any ground such as sex, race, color, ethnic or social origin, birth, disability, age or sexual orientation shall be prohibited. One last detail for your questions you might want to ask to the panel. Uh, Madame Vallon is comfortable in English, French, and German, but if you prefer participating in uh, Luxembourgish, I would try to do the translation. So I wish you fruitful discussions and uh, a happy pride. Madame Vallon, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, I'm very pleased to moderate this panel discussion with you. Uh, one reminder, please mute your microphones if uh, you're not speaking and for the public, please send in the questions via the chat function of uh, the WebEx. Uh, Commissioner Helena Dali, you've prepared a keynote speech and I would like to give you the word. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for this invitation, and I am very, very happy to join you for this online Luxembourg Pride. Although a virtual event cannot match a real life event, I welcome that so many prides have rapidly moved online because I know how important it is that we can continue the conversation on LGBTI equality in the EU. Global Pride opened a window over the wonderful diversity in which pride is celebrated around the globe. In recent years, Luxembourg made great progress on LGBTI equality and it now ranks third in Europe on ILGA Europe's famous rainbow map. You now have a national action plan that can serve as an example and inspiration for other member states. But the successes in Luxembourg also make clear how big the difference is in the EU are. According to our Eurobarometer on discrimination, in Luxembourg, the vast majority of voters are comfortable with a gay prime minister. This may be obvious to you, but it is not so for several other Europeans. Indeed, the figure is as low as 29% in other member states. Clearly, this raises the question of LGBTI visibility and political participation. How can you win an election if you are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender or intersex? If already the majority of the electorate is not comfortable with your sexual orientation, with your gender identity or with your sex characteristics. In some member states, opponents of LGBTI equality have now started fighting against the so-called LGBTI ideology that threatens their social order and their so-called traditional families. In others, we have seen the adoption of LGBTI ideology-free zone resolutions. This is rhetoric and behavior with the sole purpose of excluding a minority of people to make cheap political gains. This is not behavior that the European Union can accept, and certainly my eyes are wide open to it. The European Union cannot accept language of which the only purpose is to set, is to set up one part of the population against another, be it heterosexual people against LGBTI people, be it religious people against LGBTI people or white people against black people. Because the European Union is a union of diversity and peace between all. And you, Luxembourg, are leading by example. I want to see progress in every member state of the European Union. Part of this is recognizing that every individual is much more than the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, their age, or any other characteristic. No one is defined by a single part of who they are or a single set of needs. And society is not really grouped like items in the supermarket. We mix and interact. However, this is what we actually do in most of our non-discrimination policies and legislation. The Black Lives Matter protests are bringing so many of these challenges to light. And I want to say this, I want to say that this is an enlightening time for policymakers. We are taking it all in. This year, I will present a new strategy on LGBTI plus equality strategy, which we are currently developing in close cooperation with civil society organizations. At the heart of our new strategy will be intersectionality, a horizontal principle that I want to be present in all the work the Commission does to combat discrimination. To truly address the persistent discrimination in our societies, we must have policy that recognizes the diversity of the people it should protect. And from this basis, we will address important topics such as education, work, health, safety, 
families, society, and the international context. We are not starting from scratch. The new strategy will build on the Commission's work, such as the list of actions to advance LGBTI equality, for which we presented the final report in May this year. It will build on the Commission's work to fight against hate speech against LGBTI people and our work to support LGBTI civil society organizations and to raise awareness across the EU and important fora on the challenges LGBTI people still face in the EU today. The new strategy will also take into account findings of the recent Fundamental Rights Agency LGBTI survey, also published in May, as well as the Commission's Eurobarometer on Discrimination, which was presented last year at the high-level conference organized under the Finnish presidency. This work, collecting data and monitoring, gives us, as policymakers, extremely important insight into this, the discrimination that LGBTI people experience and the existing perceptions of the general population in different EU member states. We need this to do our job. I am sorry that we cannot be together today and celebrate, celebrate pride in all its color. We remain vigilant and continue to fight against COVID-19 and its effects. I have heard firsthand accounts from so many individuals who cannot access specific healthcare, victims of domestic and homo or transphobic abuse in their own homes. The homes where they have been told to stay in for safety from the virus. We will take into account the experience of this crisis into our new strategy and in all our work going forward. True equality means all members of society can take whatever role they want and succeed in what they do best, free from stereotypes or restrictions because of who they are or how they are perceived. This is what the European Union is about, and we practice what we preach. Happy Pride, Luxembourg. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I would like you underlined uh, all the important points we wanted to talk about today. I would like to give now uh, to the other panelists the possibility to maybe uh, react on this keynote and then we will uh, open the discussion with the public. Shall I start? Yes, uh, please. Sorry, okay. we, cannot see if the, we cannot see the person, we only see the person that speaks, so it's a little tricky, but now I see you. Okay, um, yes, thank you very much uh, for inviting me, thank you very much uh, uh, Commissioner Zali, uh, you said a lot of things, or everything you said, I can subscribe to everything that you that you actually said. You said that the European Union is a union of uh, diversity, and uh, I, I love to hear that because diversity is something that makes us strong. Uh, if we are diverse and we have different backgrounds and different aims, uh, it makes us very strong. And that's what we try to make in Luxembourg also, also with the national plan uh, for, for the LGBTI rights, because um, the diversity, to celebrate diversity and to make diversity happen and uh, to, to let it go is something very important. And we have to, to, to str strengthen our di diversity here, here in, in Luxembourg. So Luxembourg, of course, wa warmly welcomes the Commission's uh, initiative to launch uh, an LGBTI uh, equality strategy. Uh, because um, actually we are not all the same. As you said, we are in third place now, Luxembourg, uh, uh, but uh, other, other uh, EU uh, member states uh, actually uh, go back instead of going forward. And we have to uh, all together to, to fight for, for the rights of LGBTI uh, equality and for human rights, because these are human rights. LGBTI rights are human rights. So uh, you, you also said that the priority should be to enforce equality for intersex uh, people. And uh, we have special programs uh, concerning intersex people. We don't want uh, babies to, be, uh, to have an operation after their birth, for example. Uh, we try to, 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 um, 
talk to parents who have maybe a, an intersex uh, baby and uh, to to help them to to deal with it because it's uh, it's uh, difficult also to to deal with it if you are one of the uh, 1.7% uh, persons uh, who, who who was born um, uh, with uh, bio bio uh, biological uh, sex characteristics that do not fit the, the social norms, actually. So we have campaigns, campaigns like, for example, um, Féminin, Masculin, Intersex, Gardant l'Esprit Ouvert, also to, 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 uh, to create an awareness, awareness for the public that this exists and that we don't want these people anymore to be discriminated and that you don't need maybe to, to belong to the male or female, but you can be intersex or nothing and that's a, a, a right to, to, to be uh, like this. So uh, the Luxembourgish government decided to implement a high number of activities in order to ensure uh, equal rights to, to intersex uh, uh, persons. Uh, the goals and activities are stated in a special chapter of uh, the very first national action plan uh, for the promotion of uh, LGBTI rights. Uh, so they have a special chapter in, in this, uh, in this uh, national plan because we think that this is uh, very, very uh, important. It's important for us. So uh, Luxembourg um, is there. If we can help uh, the Commission, the European Union, we would uh, love to, because uh, we think that uh, the diversity is really what makes us uh, strong. And uh, if we can uh, help, uh, we would love to. And uh, I am, of course, very sad that there's no pride uh, this year, because every year it's a big event here in Luxembourg, and should, it should have been even bigger this year than uh, than last year. So I'm really, uh, I'm not very happy about this. But uh, uh, I hope that next year the coronavirus will be history, and uh, that we then uh, can make again a, a big pride and uh, and celebrate together, and also celebrate the diversity, but also um, uh, try to to make more. Uh, people aware of uh, the problems, this of discrimination problems, of all sorts of discriminations, and uh, and yeah, work together for a better world. Then, thank you. We don't hear you now. I guess it's my turn now. Is that so, or? Okay, I see you. Said, okay, so hello everyone. Right. Um, now I'm unmuted again. Okay, please. <laughs> okay, so also thank you to Gilio and to all of you to, uh, for inviting me. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and also uh, with my good two friends, uh, Helena Dali and Corinne Khan, which, which are uh, fantastic allies when it comes to defending LGBTI rights. As Helena said, uh, it's important that LGBTI gives the visibility that with politi politicians, gay politicians or lesbian politicians or LGBTI politicians, but alone we cannot do anything. It's so good to have the support of, of all of you. And, and this is what I think I learned in Luxembourg in my long career as national uh, member of parliament. It was so nice when we voted gay marriage that there was out of 60 MPs, only three who voted against, that we could have a very broad majority. The same was when we voted a few years, our very progressive transgender legislation based on autodetermination and on, um, uh, on a really progressive one. We had, we had a really broad consensus on that. And I think that's something which, which we can set an example. And I want to thank Helena also for congratulating Luxembourg to be number three on the ILGA map. We're in competition. Malta is number one. And why is Malta number one? Because you have done fantastic work in, in Malta. And I, find, I want to underline that we are two small states, the two smallest states of the European Union. And we, are, we, are, um, we have a Catholic background historically. And yet we, 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 we keep our traditions we are not against our traditions, but we are progressive and we are moving on. And I think we should use this as an example, uh, as an example, and say that the society uh, uh, can move on and 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 become open and and become progressive. And um, uh, that's I wanted to underline. Um, a second remark: I was very happy that Helena mentioned the so-called. Uh, uh, that we had this fight against the so-called LGBTI ideology. There is this gender movement worldwide, very, very well organized internationally, very well sponsored internationally, very well networked internationally. 
and um, they are very active in, in, in America, in many countries, and we feel their influence in Europe, also in the European Parliament, and uh, we really have to fight that. Therefore, I want to thank the European Commission that this LGBTI rights and gender equality is always very high on the agenda. I find it very good that we now have a commissioner who is exclusively commissioner for uh, equality, and I'm very happy this in, that we have it in the person of, of Helena Daly. But I also, and yesterday I had the chance in the, in the, in the plenary when Mr. Borrell was there, when we debated the human rights we annual report, and I read this report, and I see how much the European Union and the Commission especially invests in gender equality and in uh, LGBTI rights worldwide in their global action, and how active and how active we are in international fora where we are leaders in, in these questions. But then I also mentioned yesterday, we have to take, take care of our credibility. Will we keep credible if we have LGBTI free zones in Poland? If we have Article 33 in Hungary, which cuts the rights of trans and intersex persons? So we have also homework to do. And I think this is very good that we will have this LGBTI quality strategy in address this. And then I hope that out of this strategy, we will come to some legislative changes that we will finally unblock the anti-discrimination um, uh, directive, which has been stalled in the council for so long. I think it would be important. And then I have another little wish that we should go beyond uh, sexual orientation as a ground of anti-discrimination, but also gender identity. And uh, I think this is very, very important that we, 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 we keep gender identity also as a ground of, of um, the discrimination. This is important for trans persons and for intersex persons. And then, um, in, as you know, I'm the co-chair of the intergroup, uh, LGBTI intergroup in the European Parliament. This is the biggest intergroup in the European Parliament. We have now over, we almost have 150 members. And I'm proud that we've also got more members now from the EPP group, which is important because we don't want to be just a club of leftists or progressives, or, but it's important that we try to get as many on board as possible. And um, we are work, working very hard on that. And I am also very happy that together with uh, that, uh, the, the Commission and also Helena Dali has a very good contact with us and that together with civil society, we can we 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 can bring our input in this in this um, LGBTI equality uh, uh, strategy. So um, um, I was very happy also to hear from Helena Nadali that she keeps her eyes very wide open to these key political games which are played in some of uh, uh, our member states. This is, as I said in the beginning, very important. We have to we have to um, do that. And my last remark is something which is. I think very important where we could and where we should think on, on legislative work in the European uh, uh, Union is um, working on, 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 on the directive or regulation on mutual recognition of public documents. For us, for me, and you will all agree, of, uh, every family should continue to exist when it crosses borders in the European Union. Uh, two women with two children, when they move from one country to the other, they should have the same rights in the second country. Two guys or, or whatever family is. We have, uh, you know, rainbow families uh, uh, should not be. The <laughs> this is also something to work on. And I'm also, to finish, very confident that in the, in the um, new rule of law and fundamental rights pack, and having listened to different commissioners and also Commissioner Reinders, that uh, the word LGBTI is, 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 will, will have its place in, in, in this uh, uh, democracy, rule of law, and fundamental rights uh, act. And, uh, because intersectionality, to come back to what Helena mentioned, is so important. And I've seen how it had worked in Luxembourg, in our government, where it was not only one person who, where, the, where there was a very good um, cooperation between the different ministries. For example, when they work on, on the intersex dossier, Ministry of Health and Ministry of Integration, Corin, it's important that we work together and that we see this intersectionality to different fields. So congratulations uh, to uh, Corin again and to Helena for their fantastic work. And congratulations to uh, Rosa Litzebusch, uh, who does a great work in, in, in Luxembourg, and I'm proud that I was a founder of it. And being now co-chair of the intergroup makes me 
remind my youth when I was an activist and I feel very young again and very motivated. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Tom Hecker, I would like, would you like to add something? <laughs> yes, um, well, I keep it short then. Um, First of all, we're glad that we now have a Commissioner for Equality at the European level, which is certainly not an easy job regarding to the actual situation in some countries. And um, Commissioner Dali, we are glad that you are so passionate and supporting to the LGBTIQ plus community. Thank you for that. Um, you said uh, before, um, there are people uh, all over Europe, all over the world, uh, with the lockdown, who had to stay at home, and um, who was in a, at home in a place where family or uh, parents or uh, neighbors or what, whoever are homophobic, transphobic, and of course it is a very difficult place um, and a very difficult situation for those people uh, staying in 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 their home where you have to feel comfortable being at home, uh, and they are oppressed in, in, in those places. That's why it's so important to us to, to keep the pride um, alive this year. Even if it's online, uh, we were able to, to cap our whole program of the festival the whole week. And it's also the reason why we took uh, our slogan, you are not alone because it's, it's uh, um, not only a message that we want to have for, for this year's Pride, it's a message that we want to keep all over the year, even after Corona. Uh, it's, it's so important to support each other, no matter what sexual orientation, color skill, um, as you mentioned, also the age or whatever. We all need to stand next to each other. We are all different and and that's beautiful. That's our strength to be different. And we also need to uh, to raise our voices, to join our voices for those who can't speak because of uh, the repression, discrimination, violation, and so on. So thank you all for that support uh, that everybody of you um, gives to all of us. It's um, heartwarming. Thank you very much. Uh, now we got the first questions from the public, and uh, which I'm. Uh, so please feel free to continue uh, sending us uh, messages through the chat if you want to ask uh, questions. I have a question for, from Cédric from Belgium. How can the European Union guarantee that diversity is inserted in the school curriculum of all member states? Isn't education key? Helena Dali, maybe you would like to say something? Well, as, as far as, as competences go, we don't have uh, the competence to dictate the, the school um, curriculum. But um, when we speak in our, in our uh, strategies on gender stereotypes, and 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 how for me addressing uh, gender stereotypes is of the essence in, in all areas for instance uh, nobody is born racist or nobody is born anti lgbti it's it's society and it's our families who make us like that because of the stereotypes which they have in, in their minds. So really, we, what, we, what schools must do is, the, is, is that they must help children unlearn what they learn at home and what they learn in society. If you go to, to a kindergarten of three-year-olds, you will see them playing and, and having fun together, whatever the color of the skin was. It's when they get go home that the parents tell them, don't play with them child or that play with that other child you know so, so it's really we want to raise a generation of, of of people who are open to diversity we must take away the stereotypes from the minds so there is a lot of unlearning to do 
And I think that via our strategies, when we are putting so much emphasis on stereotypes, I think that this will help. Uh, if I, can I say something? Yes, of course. Uh, I, I think that education is the key, actually, for for anti-discrimination. Uh, it's like uh, Commissioner Dali just said, nobody uh, was born racist or anti-LGBTI or whatever. And so uh, education is, of course, the, the key. And in our uh, plan, national plan, uh, uh, we have uh, education is the first chapter, actually, because uh, uh, it's where everything starts. And so we need not only to educate children, but also um, uh, put this uh, this uh, theme uh, into the into the education of the educators and of the teachers and of all the people who are uh, at school or around school. And we need uh, tutorials, and we need uh, to 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 uh, to take this subject also for for granted for the for the teachers when they get their education. Uh, I think this is very important. It is it's important also to have tutorials uh, and we ha all have these actions in our in our plan because we think that education is the key for anti-discrimination and that's why it was so important for us to have it as a first chapter in our in our plan uh, also to 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 get it really uh, important uh, into this plan and uh, we have uh, like 16 actions I, I won't tell you all of them now because you can find them on the internet but we have 16 uh, different actions for education for school for the teachers and for all the people around the parents uh, and the children uh, uh, to to fight against uh, uh, discrimination actually. Thank you very much. Um, I have a question that joins this question slightly, uh, which means what can the EU do uh, against national decisions or, uh, for example, uh, the question asked from the public was uh, concerning education, but now we see what happens, for example, in Poland or Hungary. What, what can the EU actually do in cases like this when member states are, um, they still have, of, of course, their sovereignty of their country, but what, what, what are the measures that the EU can do in such cases? Well, we, we are, are analyzing every, every case from the legal perspective, of course, to see how far our, our competence can go in order to address these but in the meantime also we are uh, doing other things in terms of um, uh, funding of, of programs for instance uh, so 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 uh, we uh, we have written uh, to uh, member states where there are these occurrences and uh, we are uh, saying that all this goes against uh, uh, what we believe in as a European Union in, in terms of uh, um, human rights, in, in terms of embracing diversity, um, in, in terms of, of the direction we want the EU to go into, in, in, in the sense that nobody chooses how he or she is born. So how, how can we discriminate against people because of the way they were born? and, and and how they are, or how they look, or what their sexual orientation is. So this goes against uh, all this. So we are we are looking into into various um, avenues, uh, and we are we are addressing this, and we will will do all that uh, there is within our competence to uh, address. Uh, uh, these these realities, which are are very harmful, uh, only to the people involved and to the member states involved, but I think also to to the European Union uh, as a whole. I, I I think that we should be the world uh, example in 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 this uh, um, embracing of of diversity in living together with this diversity in living in peace uh, together, but peace does not only mean an absence of war. Peace also means peace with my with my neighbor, peace in, in, in the place of work. So, so it's, it's, it's a very important area of policy for us 
and we are leaving no stone unturned um, to address uh, these realities in in these this um, in these member states where these are things are occurring. If if, if you allow, I thank I, you very I, much. Please. If, you allow, I can only agree what uh, Commissioner Daly said, and uh, I was very pleased to see that the Commission uh, wrote a letter to Polish, to these Polish mayors who are and and these responsibles of of these LGBTI free zones, where they said that uh, this could have consequences on on regional funding, because it was DG Employment and DG Radio, and uh, I think this is very important that that this letter came out and it it it. it and it shows that the Commission is not only talking, but there is action uh, behind it. I also think that we should continue, um, that the Commission and the Council also must finally make this use of, of Article 7. And I think uh, there is this, this whole discussion on the budget, on the European budget, and on the multi-financial framework. And um, there is a discussion around the uh, conditionality uh, uh, when it comes to EU funding to member states. This is a very interesting debate, which 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 is which is ongoing. And um, yeah, and, and 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 we have to move, uh, in my opinion, towards that direction. It is it is difficult, but then on the other hand, you have we have to make sure not to punish the population and and not to punish the activists, the NGOs. So this is a, not an easy question, but um, it's a question worth digging in and 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 debating. Thank you very much. Um, another important issue currently is obviously the COVID nineteen crisis. So. There is many people, even in the EU, uh, many LGBTI plus people, um, they have a higher suicide rate, they have dependency issues, have more often the financial instability. And as uh, uh, Tom Hecker and the Commissioner Dali already mentioned in the beginning, that uh, especially in times where you were uh, blocked at home. For certain people, it was not a healthy situation. Uh, so I'm wondering uh, what what are the what is going to be the impact or is there already something we know? Are there already numbers or do we know something how how it impacted especially LGBTI plus people or, for example, also when there is a crisis, very often there is uh, scapegoating coming up. So there was an example in South Korea where apparently a gay man uh, had the coronavirus and then apparently homophobia uh, break out more. So is there things like that in the European Union as well? And I mean, maybe a crisis is always a moment to find new scapegoats again, or old ones again. So yeah, Mark Angel, you wanted to say something? Yes, thank you. Um, of course, uh, COVID had an, a big impact, and that's why I was also happy to hear Commissioner Dali say that this new strategy, they will, of course, uh, also um, input the, the COVID crisis will be taken in account. So that's already very positive. I can give you a few examples. Um, the, the, I, I had webinars where we spoke to Polish uh, uh, LGBTI people, and they lost young people. They lost their job because of COVID, and they had to go home into one of these municipalities which said a free zone, uh, LGBTI free zone, and they f that scared them, but they had no other way. They had to go home in these families. So these are realities which which have been, which are which are being lived. And then another problem is also was that a lot of people had to stop their treatments, especially people transition uh, their hormonal treatments, and 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 this was very problematic, uh, and uh, uh, therefore. Um, I was happy that in some countries a lot of NGOs continued working, continued counseling uh, uh, these people, and this was very important. But COVID had a really bad impact uh, on, on on many of the LGBTI uh, uh, people, especially the most vulnerable uh, uh, amongst us. Thank you, uh, Tom Hecker. Would you like to add something? I to that, because it would be interesting to see, like, um, has Rosa Letzeburg been contacted more? Did people reach out? What did you do? Well, we tried to um, to make um, a, a kind of block um, stay at home, uh, where we wanted to to bring the, the the queer culture to to the people at home. 
um, but more specifically also for for those who are alone at home uh, um, because of of the lockdown and, and nobody could could visit each other to 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 show them that that they are not alone that there is someone um, with whom they can can talk or take uh, or take contact with um, because even here in Luxembourg uh, there were um, I, I won't say a movement but also the um, like oh you, you should stay away from that person or you should change uh, the street side uh, because that's uh, a gay man uh, and 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 he has uh, corona so you need to go to to the other side in <laughs> Luxembourg even here so um that doesn't stop it goes everywhere so we we need to to even change it here thank you very much there is another question from the public uh eric Ask says he and his husband uh, pursued surrogacy in 2018 in Canada. For two years, we have been having problems in Luxembourg to get the documents recognized. What can EU do about this kind of discrimination? Maybe Corinne Kahn, you would like to answer this question? Uh, I cannot answer the question. I can only say that I'm quite uh, sad about the fact uh, to see that this is not, uh, uh, that we don't have a solution yet. And uh, I think that next week when I go to the uh, Conseil des Ministres, I will talk about it uh, with the Justice Minister for, for Justice, because I thought that this, uh, we talked about this. I, I'm not sure whether we talked, I talked with, uh, with uh, what's his name, Eric, uh, with, about it, but I talked uh, with some uh, people about it who uh, made an adoption or who, who had children coming from uh, the US or Canada and, uh, and who had these problems, but this were some years ago. So I thought that uh, I, I then talked to, to the former Minister of Justice and I thought that this problem w didn't exist anymore. So I'm quite uh, sad to see that uh, we don't have a solution yet and I'm going to, to talk about it uh, with our uh, Minister for Justice to see where the problem is or what uh, we can maybe do against it so that your child is your child and that uh, your child can have the Luxembourgish nationality, of course. Then. Yeah, thank you. This uh, obviously concerns also Canada, but even inside the European Union, marriage is not recognized in, in every country or uh, adoption what is uh, what can the eu do in this case for example commissioner uh, Daly, yes, maybe yes you... as you know uh, we we don't have competence in 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 the family uh, law uh, side of things but uh, um, we are looking into um, possible solutions vis-a-vis -vis freedom of movement okay so uh, so uh, we, we we are looking at that and also looking at member states and helping member states when when they so uh, when there is the need vis-a-vis uh, -vis their, their family policies and legislation also so uh, we are aware there are many uh, uh, situations which which come to our to, to our knowledge uh, and there is the, it, it's not it's some, some families are not uh, uh, living the lives that they should be be living with with their the rights that they deserve uh, to have so we have a, a very open mind about this and we are looking at possible avenues which we can take in order to help uh, these families. It is, it is very important for us that we, we, we find solutions and we, sh we will leave no stone uh, unturned in this area of policy uh, to be able to uh, give solutions uh, to these, to these um, families which we respect and which we embrace. If you uh, would allow me with reverence to the reference to the previous questions i want to bring to your attention three bulletins which were issued by fra regarding the coronavirus pandemic in the eu fundamental rights implications uh, one of them is with a focus on older people for instance 
uh, the other one with a focus on contact contact tracing apps they shall be issuing more of these of these uh, um, bulletins on the effects which the uh, corona uh, virus had on various sections of our of our societies and and i suggest that you use these documents they are very well made uh, they're scientific documents uh, which will help us in our, our future policies and strategies. So we are feeding in all that we have learned from the coronavirus experience and how it affected the, the different, the different uh, sectors of our um, society. Um, so so this, this, I'm sure you will find these uh, bulletins um, very, very helpful. And I am aware also of, of what Tom was saying about, about treatment not being given for instance to, to trans people because it wasn't uh, uh, considered essential but sometimes it was actually life-threatening mm -hmm. so how, how more essential than that can it can it be i also wrote at the beginning of the of the pandemic uh, to member states uh, telling them to upgrade certain services and make them essential services uh, during during the the uh, pandemic and to look at vulnerable sectors of their societies and to, to really focus on, on um, giving assistance and, and helping helping these sectors of our um, societies. And even that we, we are still we are still vigilant um, to see how how the very sectors of, of our societies were affected, are still being affected, and how can we put what we have learned from the pandemic into our future strategies. Thank you very much. Where can people who are interested into reading those documents find them? Fundamental Rights Agency of the Fundamental European rights. Union. Oh, sorry. FRA, Fundamental Rights Agency. If you Google that, you find you find these documents. Perfect. Thank can you. Can I say something to Eric's question also? I was um, I was very glad to hear Corinne say that she will contact the Justice Minister because. I remember we were very active in the Judicial Committee in the Luxembourg Parliament, even in 2018-17, working on this draft law on filiation, on, on, on this question. And we, were, we moved on very well, and then suddenly, the, I don't know what happened. So I think, uh, Corinne, you should push your colleague, and I'm sure that uh, the work we went very far already, and I don't know what happened. On the other hand, what rainbow families are concerned, we have also the European Court of Justice, who has already some, and also the, uh, the European Court of Human Rights from Strasbourg, where there is some uh, just uh, judgments and jurisprudence, which is very interesting. And this is, helps us. We can use these. Uh, Helena said we have to find avenues, and and, and these judgments can 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 help us uh, to pave these avenues to 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 make uh, life easier uh, when it comes to mutual recognition of, of, of marriage and public documents. So, um, as I said, uh, uh, we, we have to put, this is an important dossier which concerns a lot of people, and I'm sure I'm a member of Petty Commission, Petty, the Petition Committee, that uh, many petitions in, in this aspect uh, in, uh, will come in, and this also will help us pave that avenue. And um, I'm confident that uh, we find solutions. It's certainly not easy. Certainly, I think it's more difficult than the uh, anti-discrimination uh, uh, um, uh, directive. But uh, we shouldn't give up and be confident. And as Helena said, I like when she says, "We will, we will lift every stone to." How did you say this? Uh, to 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 do that. I like that expression. Leave no stone unturned. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there is another question uh, from the public. Sherry Houston asks, are there particular problems LGBTI plus people from Black, Asian and ethnical minorities need to consider? What is the support available for them? Mark Angel, would you like to say something maybe about that? I hope that I got the question right, but here we are in the aspect of intersectionality, uh, which Helena mentioned. That uh, that we have to do to, you know, there is multiple discrimination sometimes, and therefore inter inter um, intersectionality is so important. 
And uh, when I hear Helena Darling talking as a equality commissioner, not only on LGBTI, but also on the gender equality and on children's rights and, and all the strategies the European Commission wants to develop, I always understand her saying that the strategies have to talk to us. And I think this is the seat, this is this is where where we can give an answer to this question. The strategies they have to talk to each other and and address all the problems and and these problems which are sometimes overlapping, <coughs> have then find a solution. If these strategies don't talk to each other, then uh, we, that wouldn't be good. But I, again, here I'm an optimist, confident, and the intergroup will support you in the fact that these strategies will talk to each other. Thank you very much. Um, we're already getting close to the end, unfortunately. So I would like to ask uh, each of you to maybe have two last minutes for a very short sum up, or if you would like to add something that has unfortunately not been talked about due to the very short time. Uh, Tom Hecker, would you like to start? Yes, why not? Um, well, I, I stay a bit more at, at uh, Luxembourgish territory. Um, there's also an, still a lot to do. We have uh, lots of um, ideas and running projects and we're in contact, for example, with the Red Cross um, about blood donation. Uh, we work on, on a campaign with the CET, the Center for Equal Treatment. Uh, we still need a real gathering place, well, an, an, a safe place for every member of the community. Because right now, the Luxembourg Pride, besides bars, um, is the only occasion where the whole community can meet. And we still need a place where queer culture can happen and blossom. Um, if I compare our country to, for example, Trier, uh, Provence de Luxembourg, or Metz, um, and I'm not even talking about Brussels or bigger cities, we are a bit behind. Uh, in the near abroad, there are people who do nothing else full time but work on a pride for a whole year. On the other hand, we are all volunteers and organize not only the pride, but also many other projects and events. Um, like also going into schools um, um, and, and other cultural events. There are so many, I, I can't even think now about them. Uh, and, and we have to take uh, a step forward. And um, we are also so proud this year of all the support uh, we get through this. Uh, the parliament is uh, all illuminated in rainbow colors for the second time. Uh, the town hall of Sanem is uh, illuminated. The castle of Clairvaux. Um, there are uh, many flags. The representation also. Sorry. The representation of the European Commission in Luxembourg also. That was now with the flags. I, I wanted to say because there are also flags uh, across the country, at your house, uh, at the um, um, uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign and European Affairs. Uh, the Town Hall of Ash, of course, the EIB, and, and so many more. There are rainbow flags ac across the country. And, and we are amazed by, by all that support. And, and thank you also for, for everybody. But we don't have to rest on this. We have uh, to can fight, to, 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 to fight, yeah. order and, 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 and go on. Thank you very much. Uh, Corinne Kahn, would you like uh, to add some last words yes. to this discussion from your side? Yeah, actually, uh, we, we believe it is important to end the current uh, hierarchy of uh, discrimination grounds. And uh, we think that we have to add two additional grounds of discrimination, namely uh, gender identity and variation of uh, sex characteristics. And uh, Luxembourg is also calling to continue to collect at EU level comprehensive and continual data about the situation of LGBTI uh, people. I think this is very important. Uh, uh, we should not only work on what we feel, 
but we should really work on on the data that we that we collect in the in the all in EU and also also in in Luxembourg. Uh, Tom Hacker said that we don't have to rest on what we already did, and I am absolutely with you. Uh, we need to 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 get better and to to fight more uh, against discriminations. Uh, that's what we do with different programs. Uh, I think about the diversity charter, for example, uh, which is very important because we see now we have data that says that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, businesses who really uh, lift their diversity, they are better, they have economic uh, results that are quite better than, uh, than other. Uh, so uh, I think it's important uh, that we don't rest on what we already have, but that we take this to, to get uh, further and that we, we also, yeah, that, that uh, it's a thing of education, but also uh, of, uh, of uh, growing together. And uh, of course, uh, somebody said uh, Luxembourg has a, a gay uh, prime minister and uh, uh, he's not a, the only one in the, in the, in the government. Uh, I'm Jewish, so we have mi minorities in the government, but, uh, but still uh, with the Black Lives Matter, we saw that uh, discrimin discrimination still uh, happens uh, in everyday life and we have to, to fight all together about, uh, against all discrimination, all kind of, of discrimination. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark Anger, the, Thank you. I um, give you the word. Three points. COVID-19, of course, we don't have prides, uh, we don't, and, and it was a problem. And, and we all miss uh, the music, the dancing, the beer, the hugging, and the speeches. But uh, I learned something through these webinars, and I had this year so much more contact with, with uh, people from other European countries. I met uh, activists from other European countries, politicians from other European countries through these webinars. So let's say that is a little bit of a positive thing to that too, even though we miss the festive atmosphere. Secondly, um, I think it's very important of us all that we support LGBTI people and activists and, and uh, in Poland, in Hungary, in Romania, outside the European Union, and not only the LGBTI community, but also the progressive politicians who, who that we say, you're not alone, you, you don't be afraid to raise these issues, don't hide, don't be afraid to lose votes because you are pro-LGBTI or you're pro-equality. So this is uh, something very important. And al always keep in mind, there is this anti-gender movement growing and we have to go against them. And the last thing for Luxembourg, I hope uh, we will have an intersex law which will be as progressive as uh, we had the trans, uh, the trans law. And I heard Corinne talking about it, so I'm very confident. And thank you to Rosa Lützebusch to Sigal, and also we have a very active transgender and intersex, TGL Lux, they are very ac active too, and very, they're doing, producing very good documents. So I'm very happy that we have a rich civil society in, in Luxembourg, uh, and um, we want to reach Malta on the top of the IRGA map. We don't want to push you on the second place. It would be fantastic if we could share the place number one together with Malta on that IRGA map. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Dali. Maybe you would also like to say some words. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mark. Maybe you can you can look at uh, our intersex legislation uh, uh, and and uh, uh, use it for 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 Luxembourg uh, too. So uh, I I agree totally with Corinne, uh, not least because I'm a social scientist by profession. That data is so. Uh, important. We are speaking about an evidence-based commission. Also, so the more information, the more data we have, the more informed our policy and legislation will be, and the stronger our arguments will will be for for that particular policy or legislation, because we will have the the uh, data to to um, uh, back us. I want to pick up uh, on what Mark was saying on intersectionality. I think it is so, so, I think it's vital to, to address our, our policies from the intersectionality perspective, because no person is one thing only. Uh, you can be black, you can be black and LGBTI, you can be black and LGBTI and have a disability. So it, it's not a homogeneous group which we are 
legislating and making policies for. So we really must uh, be careful um, to look from the intersectionality perspective. Thank you for this. As Mark said, we've had the opportunity during the, the COVID, we were in the field all the time, of course, virtually, but we spoke to so many people, parliamentarians, civil societies, individuals who are going to, to uh, a, a, through a very hard time. Everybody went through a hard time, but some people went through a harder time because of their realities. So, so let's keep um, working and as ever, let's leave no stone unturned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you uh, very much and happy Pride. And I just wanted to say one last thing. Uh, the, in Paris, there was a small physical Pride taking place last weekend, and I really liked their slogan was Nos fiertes sont politiques, our prides are political. And I think that's also something very important. Thank you very much. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.